Okay, welcome everybody to Punish for Protecting this evening. Uh, here, let me take my glasses off. I'm just going to wait for you guys to start coming on, and I actually um, will be doing this in two parts this evening because we have special guests tonight, and they are victims of Anthony McGinty. Victims of Anthony McGinty, and that is a judge from Ulster County, New York, and it would be the Ulster County, and this is the business name, Ulster County of Family Court. Please watch and invite your friends list. I'm going to be doing this again in two parts tonight. So there'll be this video and then it'll be followed by another video in order for me to bring in all the guests. So I'm going to wait for some of you to just help me out here and invite your friends list. And let's get this thing viral uh, for all to see. Remember, when I do a video, even though right now I'm emphasizing on the state of New York, um, this covers the entire nation. I am bringing together leading advocates from all over our country um, and co-advocates to tag team together. So please pay attention because if that's your heart, we want you a part of this. We want to bring you all in, and good evening everyone, we want to bring you all in together um, because we are going to fiercely take this abusive court system down. And remember, when I say court system, I don't mean it. <laughs> I'm telling you this is a fraudulent system. And hi everybody, I do see you on here. I see you uh, saying hello to me and I appreciate you guys saying hello. Let's go ahead and let's get this list invited out right now. And remember, this is going to be in two parts tonight. Don't change that dial. You're really going to want to see this. I'm bringing victims in of one specific judge right now because my goal right now is to take down the family court in the state of New York. Are you guys aware that New York State was the first state to bring in the family court in 1962 and New York State is going to be the first state to come down? That's right. That's what I'm doing. I'm going to make sure that this state comes down and I need your help. And while we're taking down New York, remember, we're gonna let this go across the country. You see, I wanna take this system down from the four corners of the earth, not just New York State, all over. So I'm gonna go ahead and um, ask you guys to start watch parties right now. I'm gonna ask you guys to please, please invite your friends lists. It is very urgent that you help me help you get the system down. Let's do this because Christmas is fast approaching. My heart is broken. I see so many of you. You don't have your families. You don't have your children, your grandchildren, your nephews, your nieces. And so we have to work together to take this down. Three years ago in 20 or rather 2018, we're pushing 2020. I did the very first 2017 rather. Uh, no, 2018, I did the very first um, Citizens Arrest Day on January 3rd. It is, a, it is a significant day to me because that is the day that they stole my son and the day that I had a major breakthrough in not just getting my boy back, but my book was um, published on that day. My nonprofit organization was published on that day, or however you want to say it, it was established on that day. Um, the Citizens Arrest Day was established on that day. God just moved mightily because he works that way to show us and to encourage us to keep on going. We are so close, my friends, but we are still fighting a very evil system. And so we need the unity and the strength of those of us that stand in strong faith and are letting this happen. The music that you hear behind me, if you hear it, is not my own. It belongs to the whole world because we can hear it, right? So we have to say that for Facebook, though. It is not our own, even though it kind of is because we can hear it with our ears and it's playing freely in the streets, but it can't play on Facebook without us saying that it's not ours, whatever that means. But I, I got to put that out there for social media, YouTube, and this will premiere off of. Tonight, I'm going to have uh, yes, hi there. I see all you New Yorkers popping on, but I just don't want to. I just want to encourage everybody to watch because remember, this is nationwide. We are focusing within the country right now. We have an emphasis right now, a spotlight on New York because we've come so far right now with them even discussing in a narrative that they want to abolish the family courts and other courts, but then they want to add that they want to merge these courts together. We do not want a merger. You don't do both. That is word salad. I take that word from Chris Hallett. No, what we want to do is we want to we want to um, we want to abolish and we want to arrest. We want to arrest. We need to arrest these judges for the treason that they've been committing on American soil. My first guest, who's going to come on now, and then after this, I'm going to cut this video off and I'm going to restart the video with more guests. And I'm focusing right now on one particular judge. His name is Anthony McGinty. So I'm going to call. This is a gentleman that actually is a very big part of father's rights. So um, let's just get, uh, I hope you guys have been inviting your friends on. 
Let me actually just do a quick invite list here real quick, and then I'm going to call this gentleman on, um, and I'm going to allow him to, I'm going to let him introduce himself, and um, and uh, you got a lot to hear tonight. You're going to learn a lot tonight if you haven't learned um, what, we, what it is we're doing um, and how you can be a part of this, how you can help. Because like I said, I'm bringing frontline advocates together all over the country, those that are really strong and out in the front lines and, you know, out uh, in the public a lot here and out, you know, doing, doing what we need to do to take the system down as I'm going to focus primarily on New York State. But guys, I'll be heading to Florida soon. I'll be heading uh, all over, guys. I'm just, I'm just going, going, going as I'm pulling down the state of New York. Uh, we want to give you all these wonderful tidbits and how we can do this together and take this evil, wicked, gigantically evil and gigantically wicked system down. Okay, so here I'm going to call in my first guest. He's coming in by phone. I am waiting for another person to come. One of my guests, unfortunately, had a, had to uh, bury her mom today. I was very heartbroken to hear that. And, um, and uh, she had McGinty, and she was a victim of McGinty, and she went through a trial, and um, she went through a trial with him that actually led to absolutely nothing, and I kind of wanted her on here to tell for herself what happened, but hope you guys can hear clear clearly. I'm going to call my first guest in by phone, and he'll, he'll give you some information, and you guys, if you can kind of tell me if you can hear him. And, George Courtney. Oh, yes, here he is. Okay. Hi, George. How are you this evening? You're Hello. live on Facebook. Salve Francesca. Yes, it's Francesca. So you are live on Facebook right now. Let me just make sure you're nice and loud for everybody to hear you. And um, George, Mr. Uh, this is George Courtney, everyone. George, you uh, tell tell everybody what it is that you do, and I want I'm going to just look in the comments to see if they can hear you clear. Go ahead. Okay, about 15 years ago, I got involved in the maelstrom of family court, a court I never thought I'd see. Uh, I was married to a lawyer. And uh, it changed, it really literally changed my life, changed my kids' lives. But I've become a student of a large power and corruption within the family court of New yes. York State. So you were married to a lawyer in New York State? Correct. And what happened there? And it led you to start getting a Well, I don't want to go into all the nasty no, details because okay. everybody has the details. But the problem is the family court swallowed people up, swallowed us up, caused a harm, caused uh, huge expenditures of money to predatory lawyers, um, and really didn't resolve very much. You, you see, these things are, you know, social problems, psychological problems, and you have uh, a whole industry of hundreds of thousands of lawyers, literally, in New York State and in other states that just predate on people's um, personal problems involving their children. Now, did you see this? Did you witness this for yourself being married to an attorney? Did you witness this well, behavior? I, you know, it's funny because when you're married to somebody, you're in a state of denial and you want to think everything is very positive. But by degree, I, real, I saw uh, so much corruption, lack of oversight within the court system. Uh, uh, the whole, uh, whole concept of, you know, the people under the court system that have to use the court system, they're the lay people. That's they're right. the underlings. And huge amounts of extraction of, of uh, savings from them to the legal system um, in a very corrupt manner. Um, and a whole industry is devoted to just taking children away from parents right. um, with, with, you know, without proper evidence, without proper law. And it, it astounded me. So I really dedicated the last 15 years of my life to trying to help. And uh, I've been on TV and radio about the issue. And more and more people are getting very, very concerned oh, yeah. that this isn't the America that we were brought up in. That's exactly right. And it's getting progressively worse, and they're becoming progressively more bold and more arrogant in, in, their, in their decisions. Now, what can you tell us about uh, the so-called judge, which we know is actually an administrator, Anthony McGinty of Ulster? Oh, uh, Anthony McGinty. Well, the way I found out about him was one of my clients, because I'm, I'm also a paralegal now, and I was the president of the Father's Rights Association of the Capital District, but uh, he was assigned uh, from downstate, was the Kingston area, to, uh, to hear um, one, of, one of my clients was a uh, veteran. And uh, he, was a, he, he was brought into the case. He refused to look at any of the paperwork that was filed. Mm -hmm. He Then it took five months before there was actually a trial. That's what he does. And, uh, you know, he was extremely corrupt. He didn't even show up when he was supposed to show up, although he was the assigned judge. I didn't understand why Kingston would be assigned to Albany. 
Right. There were supposed to be conflicts of interest here in Albany. He didn't even show up. up. Um, and then five months went by, and of course my client was denied access to essentially his daughter for, for, for no reason whatsoever. Yeah. And it went on and on and on, and then I found out, of course, that Mr. McKinty was an ex-law guardian, he's very much involved in the system, makes his big salary. His wife also, uh, you know, it's like a cottage industry with the McKinty's, you know, both of them are judges. That's an inherent conflict right off the, off the top. And, and, and attorneys, which is a conflict, and they're not supposed to be co-practicing, and they are. Co correct, and also she, she had problems. I don't know how she got around them, but she did one of the no-nos. She took client money and put it in an escrow, put it in the wrong escrow account or somehow misused the money. That would then she explain that way that she doesn't understand money or something, doesn't understand finances. Right, was, and she was disbarred. She was disbarred temporarily, right? Yeah, and then it became a, it's funny. Um, the, you know, there's no citizen review board. That's what you need. You don't need the, you know, the proverbial, you know, uh, foxes guarding their own um, situation. What you, what you need is an outside independent group that actually are the users right. of the, of the uh, of, you know, of the system. And they're most likely to have some, you know proper say on this situation but they're pretty much excluded i really believe we need cameras also in these family courts because how else do you hold people to any kind of honest virtue if you're not really watching what they're doing that's right but there is no there is no accountability like you said and yeah. the thing is we could put cameras all we want right now today we need to have them arrested because they've been doing this for five decades of abuse so any other criminal would be arrested by now so they need to be arrested at least 50 times over. So, you know, they steal children. They steal money. Mm -hmm. They're uh, aided and abetted by their big collegiate. I mean, the way people don't realize it, but the way family court judges and some Supreme Court judges are put in office is uh, their bar associations, they get really get tired of billing clients. They used to put in a number of years. And then they all of a sudden are um, put in by the bar associations, and John Q. Citizen doesn't have a say. He doesn't really understand how that process works, and it's not merit-based whatsoever. So you, you actually, did, what, were you, what were you saying about the Father's Rights Organization, though, that you got involved with? And tell me a little bit about that. Well, with Father's Rights, we, we thought traditionally, and we, we felt that there was a bias in the system against fathers. Some of that's normalized, and some of it still exists. Um, but I also got involved more and more and realized this was a people problem, because I dealt more and more with women who were being screwed over by the system, being denied access because of act whatever accusation. It's a court of accusations. It's a court of perjury, where perjury is accepted all the time. <laughs> It's, it's not a court whereby, you know, you know, proper professionals are trying to, you know, make a plan where people can properly parent children. It's like they, the court pours gasoline on a fire that is starting, and it should be the opposite way. And New York State began the process. In 1962, the New York State Family Court was the first family court act in the whole country. There you go, everybody. 1962, the first family court act in the country. Yeah, we were progressive in 62. And then it became very corrupted. Uh, and then, you know, there's an organization, a very strong organization in Boston, I think it's called the, um, the, the uh, National Parents Organization. And they, they rate New York State as an F, the worst in, of all 50 states, as far as you know, analyzing and protecting parents and children. Right. Well, I mean, and I have, in my comments up. right now, I have several victims of specifically Anthony McGinty, which is what we're focusing on today. But we're focusing on the state of New York and then the entire nation because we plan on taking it down here in order to let it follow through with the rest of the country. So I have everybody that's watching that's a strong leader, a c advocate right now, we're going to be we're going to be actually designating people to specific areas to help us pull this down. But um George, you you had a lot of um you have a lot of uh good insight um as to as a paralegal as well and then you were married to an attorney, you saw all this corruption. What do you suggest, what were some of the things that you were telling me before we spoke tonight on here um, with regards to, I know you're saying they don't win and we know they don't win, but why does that help to do a 1983? Why does that help? 
Oh, oh, you mean talk about filing a federal lawsuit for discrimination, essentially, yes. for, for taking away your basic rights to your children. Yes. There, there's a statute, it's called 42 U.S.C. 1983, it's the anti-discrimination statute. And believe right. it or not, it came out of the end of the Civil War. Yes. Uh, and, the, and it's called the anti um, uh, Ku Klux Klan statute. And yes. what we've done is we've used it. Uh, you can sue a, anybody who's called a state actor, anybody who's acting under state power, can be sued for discriminating against any individual, particularly violating any federal uh, civil rights. Yes. You can sue them. Now, now, the problem is then they come up, they don't come up and, and, and answer you right. and we don't they don't do anything wrong. <laughs> what they say is we have immunity. That's right. how they get off of it. <laughs> right. But I find that the more of these things you file, you can get rid of judges. Yes. You, know, you don't file them speechlessly. You file them with your fact pattern. But you, but you file a 42 U.S.C. 1983 lawsuit, and it starts to depict something on them. Right. And you also file with the local office of court administration, and you also file with the New York State Commission on Judicial Conduct. I believe that the critical mass starts to file. That's the thing, because, because the, the commission doesn't, doesn't like do anything publicity, either. It doesn't like egg on its face. Mm-hmm. And, and and that's what you have, that's what you have to do proactively. And it takes a lot because... Because uh, citizens don't have, don't have a lot of rights. Here. So you're you're are you willing to are you willing as a paralegal? I have millions of people followers. Are you willing to start helping some of these people as a paralegal? Would you be willing to oh. start pushing maybe a whole entire New York State lawsuit? If we, I I can bring you <laughs> countless New York State victims of even just one judge at a time. I've got countless against McGinty, countless against Judge Pearl, countless against Judge uh, uh, Brennan, countless against Judge Woods, countless against Judge Posner. I can go on and on and on. I mean, violent judges, judges, judges that belong, to, literally they should, oh, I better I have, not say on Facebook where they pre- really belong. pedophiles, you know. I, I actually had one of my clients, <laughs> they asked if my client would wear, a, a, you know, a wire. I mean, the, the stuff they get away with is literally the, the getting away with murder. But I think yeah. it's going to require like a powwow because what you're, what you're trying to say is you'll set all people to me. And, and because there's so much corruption and so many people that are hurt by this, yeah. are literally destroyed and, and you know, tra- traumatized to the point of, you know, l- losing a lot of normal happiness and... and lo- lo- uh, lo- loss of everything. Loss of literally, uh, loss of everything. There's there's just broken people walking around because their families have well, been yeah, ripped apart. Well, yeah, that's one of the problems with the, with, the, with the reform movement is getting a lot of people that can be very cogent and smart in, in their arguments and the public relations that require, because, you know, public relations is really what's going to cause societal change. Yes, and to right. take this away from these three, $400, $400 an hour lawyers who just, you know, essentially bankrupt parents. That's right. Talking about child support, they don't care about child support, they care about themselves. No, and, just and stealing the amount children of money that's and... made by people who are in the family courts. The amount of money made by, made by these attorneys is ungodly. Mm-hmm. I mean, you have many of them making half a million dollars a year. And, and not just that, not just that, but like the committee, the, the uh, New York State uh, Commissioner, Sheila Poole from CPS, she it openly yeah. admitted at the New York State Assembly, she was the first speaker, she openly admitted that they have unlimited funds. So if they have unlimited funds, okay, and we don't have unlimited funds, this is what we're up against. And so... The, the oh, yeah, you're, you're up against all kinds of things. You know who defends by the judges? The Attorney General's Office. The Attorney General's Office has approximately a thousand attorneys. Yeah that are able and willing to, to, to defend the state actors. Did you know that the New York State um, Unified Court System has a budget every year? Very few people pry apart the budget. The budget's over $3, million a year, $3 billion a year. $3,000 million, $3 billion. Yeah. It's okay. ungodly if you start it's, it's to It's ungodly. Budget. It's absolutely ungodly. And that's why we, as a, as a gargantuan-sized movement that we actually are, need to literally... I would like to see this year's January 3rd Citizens Arrest Day actually happen not to arrest the economy, to arrest the judges. That's my goal, abolish arrest. I don't want to hear anything else in between because you're, they're criminals. They cannot be, re, you cannot reform them. It's not fair to the people. It would be a grave injustice to reform something that started out, like Robert said, I see you on here. The system was never voted in. We never voted it in. It's treason on American soil. It's time to get rid of it. There is no other answer for that. Uh, if we need something, why don't we see how, it ha- how well it works? I bet you, I guarantee you'll see less probably it would go way down to nothing, but I'll, I'll be a little bit conservative on my opinion here. Um, I guarantee that abuse will go way down, child abuse will go way down, quote-unquote domestic violence will go way down, uh, filicides will go way down, drug abuse will go way down if we get rid of the family courts. 
I'm just saying. I mean, you know, we start seeing some children that actually have a chance to grow well, up you healthy. You know, something, if you study it, the, the, the per people that are in prison, many of them are victims of the family court by exactly. way of being the children of the parents who went through the family court. That's right. Yep, and, and then, they, and then they, they get thrown lot, into a lot of, a, of anger because of what they were uh, forced to go through yep. because of the nature yeah. uh, and the corruption, the literal corruption of any kind of decent values in that family court system. Yeah, yeah. So on the phone here, I have George Courtney, and he's um, in New York State as well. Uh, we are exposing uh, Judge Anthony McGinty, guys. We're going to follow suit with all the judges of New York State. We're going to follow suit with with every state in the nation as we pull this system down. I'm happy to say that, you know, 1962 was it established in the state of New York, and, and 2020 we're going to disestablish it in the state of New York. That's my goal. So it started here. It's going to end here, right? It says if we can make it here, we can make it anywhere. Well, when we make it go away here in New York, we can make it go away everywhere. Guarantee. Guarantee. Oops, hold on. His volume. Yep. And it's Judge Catherine Chalakis in huh? Rensselaer. She, she needs to go. She's terrible. I thought we'd get rid of about three judges already. I've spent all kinds of time on the computer. Yeah. You know, one of them was down there in Columbia County, Judge Chica. Yeah, and not even, and they're not even judges. They're administrators. They're administrators. I mean, their title is wrong. Their immunity is is a fraud. The court itself is a fraud. So there you have it. There's the reason that they're making the opposite of normal decisions. This is why they're making the opposite of normal decisions. It's not because they're over, over, they're overwhelmed. They like to use the excuse, and CPS likes to use the excuse that they have caseload. They have too much caseload. Well, that's not true. Everybody wants a job, so they could just hire more judges if that was really the case. But everybody doesn't want that job because most people have a moral compass. These people, I don't know where they come from, the pit of hell. All right? So it's not caseload. It's well, what they're doing hacks. with the they're caseload. They're political hacks. They make over a million dollars a year because they're in a 10-year contract. They make almost $2 million a year or $2 million over 10 years. Yeah. Essentially being political hacks. So here's what I want to tell everybody, and George, I want you to say a little bit more before we get off. This is a two-part video. I'm going to be coming back on in the next two to three minutes when we're through with this. So I want you guys to come back on because I have more victims of Anthony McGinty that are going to speak out tonight. We have one mother who was in court. Think about this. Before Christmas, I have one who's a police officer, and when I tell you what this man did, you will appreciate him so much and why I chose to take his case a couple of years ago, an Anthony McGinty victim. Um, he destroyed this man's entire family and right before Christmas put him in jail for 10 days for no reason now, okay? This is a good, this is a good police officer, okay? He doesn't go after the corrupt ones. And a mother who literally had a stroke on her way to court, okay? And the, and the, her, the doctors were like in awe. And this sick psychopath, Anthony McGinty, took her children away that day and did it without her being in the court. And she's going to speak out tonight, too. I have more victims I see in the in the queue, too. So I'd like to have them each have a chance to speak to you. And, and we can expose this like wildfire, guys. And again, I'm pulling all of the head top advocates from all over the country. And, um, and oh, 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 George, uh, hold on a minute. Let me just finish that thought, and then I'm going to ask a question. You're, that I see. you're looking at the tip of the iceberg. Yeah. You're presenting at the tip of the iceberg. Yeah. Oh, David Jose is asking, George, he said, did you say a 10-year contract? Is that what you said? Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. They get elected for 10 years. See, people don't realize a lot of this stuff. A family court judge gets elected once every 10 years. A, a Supreme Court judge every 13 years. Most of them are acting Supreme Court judges, so they go back and forth. So 10 years, and I'm trying to remember what the, the latest salary is. I think it's around 170000 a year. Yeah, one, 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 one 190. Times 10, you got $1.7 million dollars plus all their benefit package. That's right. That's right. No, um, George, um, uh, so McGinty's in way past 10 years. What's the deal? Why can't we... Oh, oh he, 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 you know, he, he's in the greatest year. Remember, he began as an... They used to call them law guardians. They're called attorney for the child now. Right, attorney for the child. He's a spokesperson for the, for the child. They hardly even talk to the children. They, oh, no. They and, and, no and when they do, they child. just they they manipulate the, the children. The children fear them. They manipulate the children. That's what... They, it's a game. It's a big oh, yeah. game. Yeah. There's no fairness. Mm-hmm. First of all, children should never, ever have to deal with a stranger and not have one of their loving oh, yeah. care mothers or fathers in the room with them. Okay, I don't they ever believe in that. All the time. By the way, the, 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 the license to be a lawyer in New York State, it's, it's essentially a liar's voice, uh, you know, a license. Oh, yeah, there's no it's such so thing. It's a license. It's a yeah. license to steal.
Tito and to lie. Well, is Schwar versus Board of Examiners um, under the Supreme Court, um, and it's there's no such thing as a, li a license, a law license. They go to jail for a law license. You can't take money on a quote unquote law license. It's a bar membership, period. That's what it is. So that's what they lied to the people, so the people wouldn't speak up in court. And the people. They call it white collar welfare for the lawyers, by the way. The attorney for the child program used to be the law guardian program. They call it white collar welfare for, for lawyers because it's a, it's a little guaranteed money. Yeah. And uh, they have their foot in the door. Right. And then they do all their, 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 their regular billing is at very high rates. You know, oh, it's yeah. like helped out financially. The average person can't afford. Any kind of well, it's it's really country. it's really really sad because when you have enough money to start paying for lawyers, they they just keep you know they'll they'll drain you until you've given them all the, everything you own. If you've got a lot of money and you own homes and a business, it's all gone. It goes to them. If you don't well, have I was money, told by a judge many years ago. I lived in at one time. I made really good money, and one of my neighbors was going to get divorced from me to this tonight and um and and speaking out and uh you know and everything and um you know i'm gonna go to get i'm gonna do part two now everybody so we're gonna move on to the next live i want to just thank george again for being here and uh we'll talk further um possibly if you are willing well, I to want to congratulate you on your fervor on your focus and on your attempts to help the you know the common people who essentially are suffering thank from you from what the system is doing to them personally with their children you know the, the uh i i, I said this is a center of post-traumatic stress disorder domestically you know mm -hmm. yeah well but they're causing so it <laughs> thank you so much i appreciate that and it means a lot to hear you say that and um god bless you and merry christmas and uh thank, thank you again you. for merry christmas happy holidays to Same you team. and all the folks that you're interacting with all right well you got about a lot of viewers here listening to you so all right thank you so very much and we'll be in touch thank you Okay, sounds good. Okay, everybody. So thank you again for listening to that. I'm going to start part two. I have ver several victims that I'm going to bring in, and then this is going to be put together. This will go on all five TV stations, and uh, I'm going to continue to expose. We want to get the most rogue judges of New York State off the bench. We're shooting for January 3rd. But I want to talk about the Ulster County District Attorney's Office, who's ignoring our calls. Now, the District Attorney's Office is who is supposed to um, indict these judges, not just get them off the bench. And we'll talk more about that. But I'm going to go to the next video. So, guys, if you'll jump on to the next video, I really appreciate it. So you can now hear from some more of the victims of the tragic and vile things this man has just done before Christmas. Before Christmas. Listen, if you're Ebenezer Scrooge and you can't get a heart even before Christmas and you do six psychotic things like this, you have no right being in any position of authority, having anything to do with the most innocent of all, which is our children. So thank you for watching and step into the next live video in just a few minutes. Thank you.